Well, welcome. This is just a brief talk on uh, adverse events after vaccination. Now, of course, after vaccination, it's quite relatively normal to get a few minor side effects, but uh, in a vast minority, a tiny minority of cases, there are more severe complications. And the important thing is to know what these are and to look out for them. So let's just have a look at this report here. This is from the uh, this is published on the 17th of May from the Centers for Disease Control. And this one is particularly about uh, adverse events after the messenger RNA vaccines. So the messenger RNA vaccines, of course, in the States are the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, as opposed to the uh, adenovirus vector vaccines, which are the uh, Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. So let's start off with what this report tells us. Now, this report is interesting, but very light, it has to be said, on numbers. So it describes things, but it doesn't really give a lot of numbers. Now, hopefully these will be coming out soon, but we'll give some numbers, some other data that will give us some indication of what might be coming out in the States based on what happened in Israel. Not that we know that yet, but it would be good to get the numbers soon. Now, myocarditis after the MR messenger RNA ribonucleic acid vaccines. Now, um, you probably know if you've watched previous videos or from general knowledge, the myocardium is the contractile muscle in the heart. Myocarditis, anything that ends in itis, inflammation of. So there's inflammation of the myocardium. And this can happen uh, 12 to about four days after the vaccine seems to be the kind of time it possibly could occur based on the Israeli data anyway. But let's come up to date with the, uh, the US data here. So this, the, the, this is a report from the Advisory Committee on Immunisation Practice, Vaccine Safety Technical Working Group, um, various groupings uh, in, in the States. Uh, but the report particularly on the, uh, the vaccine safety technical working group here. So this is their report from the, um, from the 17th of May. Now, what they say here is uh, they've included several presentations on myocarditis following messenger RNA vaccines. So they do seem to be saying here that this is a potential adverse effect. This is the first time this seems to have been sort of uh, admitted to. Now, um, the numbers are very low. Um, is it something to worry about? It's, well, it's certainly something to take into account, yes. It's being aware of these things and treating the patients early. In the same way that there was this blood clot problem with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, now people know how to treat it. Um, as Susan was talking about in the last video, uh, it is less of a life-threatening risk now, but always very small numbers. Um, so um, they received reports from the uh, Department of Defence in the States, Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, Vaccine Safety Data Link, Veterans Administration, Clinical Immunisation Safety uh, Assessment Groups. So all of these uh, groupings reported. And from what it says, it looks like they've reported some cases of um, post-vaccine myocarditis after the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, after the messenger RNA vaccines. Um, so they put this positively. They put vast... Uh, so the, vac the what's the vast one? That's the that's the vaccine safety technical working group concluded that there are relatively few reports of myocarditis. So this is true, but they do seem to be acknowledging that there are now some. Now, part of the reason I wanted to do this video was that a lot of the focus in the press seems to have been on complications of the um, the adenovirus vector vaccines the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and the uh, Janssen Johnson & Johnson vaccine, whereas just wanted to balance things out a bit. But there's an important point that I'm going to have to come to that I can't rush. But uh, anyway, uh, cases seem to occur. So basically there is uh, four, four things cases seem to occur. So um, most of the cases predominantly in adolescents and young adults. So it seems to be younger people that are more prone to getting this myocarditis after the mRNA vaccines. 
often more males than females. So young adults, often males. More often following the second than the first dose. So after the first dose, it doesn't seem to be such a problem. Um, after the second dose, it is more of a problem. Some data has shown that if people get this condition after the first dose, it's because they previously had the actual virus. So this seems to be some interaction between the vaccine and the immune response the body's already generated from that data, uh, typically within four days after vaccination, uh, 12, 12, 12 hours to four days. So that's roughly consistent with the Israeli data, actually. Uh, the Israeli data said 12 to 96 hours from memory. So they're, they're the four groupings. So um, after the second dose, typically, unless someone's had the infection, typically four days, within four days after the vaccination. Most cases appear to be mild, which is encouraging, but they are following up. Now, I think there's a really important immediate implication here. So the, 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 the main feature of this would likely be chest pain. So chest pain needs to be taken seriously and needs to be assessed. And I think it's generally, well, obviously, if you had myocarditis, exercise would be absolutely contraindicated because <clears throat> that means you would never do it. Because if the heart muscle was inflamed and you start exercising, because the muscle's inflamed, the electrical activity in the heart muscle may be abnormal. And that could mean that the heart muscle does that, which is called ventricular fibrillation. Um, I don't think there's any cases of that happening, but I think that's why it's important not to exercise um, after, after vaccine for, for a period of time or, or not do strenuous exercise anyway, if that can be avoided for a period of time. And certainly if there's any adverse effects such as chest pain uh, after a vaccine, although they're very unlikely to occur, if there was those effects, then people should rest until their senior doctors tell them otherwise. So um, interesting. Now, the thing is, this has got implications for the UK. So from the 7th of May, the UK, under 40 is to be offered alternative vaccine to the AstraZeneca. And of course, in, in the UK, that means it's an mRNA vaccine, the, uh, the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. So under 40s basically need to be offered an alternative vaccine. And that means it's an mRNA vaccine. So in the UK, we're saying offer these mRNA vaccines rather than the adenovirus Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine to younger people. Prefer the mRNA vaccines is basically what we seem to be saying in the UK. But let's go back and look at the data from the US. Predominantly in adolescents and young people got the comp this complication after the mRNA vaccines. And yet in the UK, we are advocating these vaccines for the younger people rather than the adenovirus vectors. Often more in males rather than females. Well, half of the, about half the population under the age of 40 in the UK is male. So what I think the vaccination authorities need to do in the UK and the US is tell us whether young men might be better off avoiding the MR, mRNA vaccines. So that's the question I'm asking. I'm, I'm not saying that. I think they should adjudicate on that. So at the moment, they're saying offer an alternative vaccine to anyone under the age of 40. That includes young men. That means they're more likely to get the mRNA vaccine. But we know that there's an increased risk of myocarditis albeit it's very small. But of course, the risk that they're trying to guard against, which is the thromboembolic complications and the thrombocytopenia are very rare in the adenovirus, Oxford, AstraZeneca and, and um, Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And the, the risks of the uh, thrombocytopenia thrombosis syndrome are greater in women. So I'm just wondering, I, I, I think the vaccine agency should state if they would prefer young men to have the Oxford AstraZeneca type vaccine in the UK, whereas young women would probably be better off getting the Pfizer vaccine. Because it's more males than females get the myocarditis after the mRNA vaccines, and it's more females than males 
get the thrombocytopenia, thrombosis syndrome after the adenovirus vector vaccines. So I wonder if they'd like to make an announcement on that. I may be completely wrong. I don't have the full data. They do. But from what I'm seeing here, from what I'm seeing here, it could be that they decide in time to offer young men the uh, adenovirus vector vaccines and young women the mRNA vaccines. But so far, there's no mention of that. And I, I must say, I do find this... I find this surprising that they've just done a blanket thing based on age, but they seem to ignore the sex difference data. Young men more often. Now, in the same, um, actually it's further down. This is a link here. This link is actually on this page here. This link here is, um, is uh, that link there. <clears throat> so we could maybe just go on to that. So <clears throat> th 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 this is the information uh, here on that one. Now, um, let me summarise what that is saying as well. So this is the thrombosis, thrombocytopenia syndrome, which I think we're probably familiar with, the blood clots and the low platelets, uh, following the Janssen uh, vaccine in reports in the States. Now, it's a little difficult to follow this, to be quite honest. Um, so they give lots of information here. And let me just show you where I got my figures from. This is like in the form of a PowerPoint, which is, uh, I guess, it's just the way they're presenting the, the, the data in this situation. But the, the way I got these figures were, were from here. So the, 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 these figures here on, on the vaccination numbers before the pause and after the pause for the um, for the for the uh, Janssen Johnson and Johnson vaccine in the states. Anyway, here's the data. So I've calculated from that that it's this is information from 7.4 million doses of the uh, Janssen vaccine. Um, now the, the, the this TS at TTS the thrombos. Thrombosis, thrombocytopenia syndrome, this blood, rare blood clot disease. Median age of complication was 40. Patients aged in range from 18 to 59. And as far as I can tell, from the 7.4 million cases, 7.4 million doses, rather, of the Janssen vaccine given, uh, there was 28 cases of uh, thrombocytopenic thrombosis syndrome identified. 22 female, 6 male. So we see that more females are getting complication from the uh, from the adenovirus vector vaccines. More males are getting complications from the messenger RNA vaccines, particularly in the younger age groups. So it's always the younger age groups that are more affected. But the mRNA vaccines are affecting more young men. The adenovirus vector vaccines are affecting more young women. That's why it would make sense to me uh, that the authorities adjudicate on that. So advising that young women get the Pfizer, Moderna or young men get the um, the uh, Janssen or the Oxford AstraZeneca. I don't know, but I think that's I would like to hear them m m make a declaration on that. I really think that they should rather than just the simple sex differential. Now, just to compare these numbers, so that, that was 28 cases out of 7.4 million vaccines. Now, frustratingly, um, th this site here where they're reporting on this, um, they haven't yet, as far as I can see, published any numbers. Now, I wonder why they haven't published any numbers on this, because the published numbers on the Janssen vaccine... If I've just missed it, email it to me, send it to me. But So 7.4 million doses, 28 cases of thrombocytopenia thrombosis syndrome. Now, given that we haven't got data from the United States on the incidence of myocarditis after mRNA vaccines, for example, Pfizer is an mRNA vaccine. Let's look at Israeli data. And we looked at this a few weeks ago. Now, in, in Israel, they looked at 5 million people that were fully vaccinated that had had two doses, that is. 
and they recorded 62 cases of viral myocarditis. Mostly after, the, uh, mostly after the second dose, most in men under 30. So again, mostly in young men. So the, the, the fact that this data is consistent with the United States makes me think this is probably correct. So again, my question is, would it be better to give young men the Oxford AstraZeneca or the uh, Janssen Johnson & Johnson vaccine rather than the Pfizer vaccine? It's, uh, it's, it's a question they don't seem to be uh, considering. But if we look at that, so that was 5 million out of 62. So that was 5 million, 62 cases of myocarditis after 5 million vaccinations. Whereas this was 28 cases after 7.4 million vaccinations. Now, I haven't, I haven't worked out the, uh, the, the, the figures here, but you can see that 28 out of 74, so you can see actually... This is a higher percentage, isn't it? Work out the percentage if you want. But uh, 28 out of 7.4 million versus 62 out of 5 million. This is a higher percentage. So it looks like it looks like from this, there's potentially more myocarditis after the mRNA vaccines, as opposed to the one that the media and people seem to have. Um, been subject to a lot of publicity from for the uh, for the DNA virus vector vaccines, and yet from the Israeli data here, this seems to be a greater risk after the mRNA vaccines. So, um, the, the 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 people that are uh, this is recognised early in and they're properly treated, then um, we, we couldn't expect them to do well. But they're also very rare you know this is still not uh, a re any reason but all of the regulatory authorities say you're safer to get the vaccine than not so uh, it's not this is not anti-vaccine in any way but it is indicating to me that I, I want the regulatory authorities to declare the sexual difference in young people as as i've said because it would seem to me from the data that we have that relatively speaking it would be safer for young men to get the Oxford AstraZeneca or the Janssen and young women to get the Pfizer or the Moderna. Let's hope there's some declaration on that rather than this rather crude, uh, just everyone under a particular age rather than mentioning uh, gender. So I've made appeals to regulatory authorities uh, many times. I um, don't think I've ever listened once, but... Um, we have actually been uh, anticipated a few issues on the on this channel, quite a few issues, including the whole pandemic itself back in January 2020. So um, it would be good if that was addressed so we could choose which vaccine we are using to minimise the already very, very small risks of adverse reactions, but to minimise them as much as possible and it looks like sex differentiation is going to be necessary to do that let's hope the regulatory authorities make a pronouncement on this soon even if it's to say there's no difference forget it but at least they've said that officially but from the data we have that's how i read it at the moment so thank you for watching this video